Thank you, Brother John, for those kind words of introduction. It's my good friend and evangelist, Chris Nikely, anywhere in the audience. We stand for a moment, brother. He is an evangelist who serves the Lord in Cleveland and then around the country, a man whom I respect very much, a man who remembers us also almost every day in prayer, even when I was sick. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> our God and our living Father, these days have been very special days in our life. The visitation of our great God through the Holy Spirit we all experienced and still do. We have nothing of our own. I don't have anything. Unless it comes from thee, we acknowledge, O oh God, that we can do nothing. Thou hast raised this testimony in this manner almost 39 years ago. Thank thee, O God, that thou hast strengthened the hands of thy people to carry on this great ministry. And here we are, gathered together this evening, just to look to thy face, to hear something from thy word. We glorify thy name, receive our praise and thanks in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Boy, after about 20 years, here I am in your midst. So glad to see some of the uh, oldies, if I can use that word. Almost towards the end of the First World War, a preacher came from North India to South India. He came to my home state of Kerala. He came to a place called Changanno. He came to that town or a very small place called Perisheri. And one night, maybe more than one night, there were some special meetings. And the um, municipal magistrate with his assistant and a few others were in attendance. And the preacher proclaimed the gospel the word came with such force and power that among the many who heard that word and committed their lives, there was a young man. The place where he was sitting, it was almost shaken as the gospel was trumpeted there. Everything I cannot explain at the moment because there is not much time. That very night, in front of his own boss, the municipal magistrate, this young man openly confessed to the Lord Jesus, receiving him in his life. Thereafter, he resigned the job and then took a, just a New Testament, traveled, crisscrossed the state of Kerala for almost 50 years, and even beyond the outskirts of Kerala. Bringing up seven children in the faith of the Lord. That was my father. The preacher was the late Sadhu Sundar Singh from Punjab. In 1954, as I was in my second year in college in Trivandrum, one Sunday morning, attending a worship meeting. After the worship meeting, <clears throat> that humble preacher, hardly anybody knew him, he read this verse from Galatians chapter 3. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. And then he gave the gospel. 
my heart was challenged i was rebuked though i was born in the christian family i had not truly repented that sunday morning when i went back to the college dorm i was a happy man i remember that day even now after coming to bombay in 1972 we were holding a big year convention but the george mathan can very well attest to that every day 6 to 700 people would gather in the open field and the late m a thomas some of you might know him he was one of the featured speakers he on sunday the last in the last uh, message he took that particular portion from joshua chapter 24 gave a mighty challenge to everyone in the in the you know how emma thomas has been in that um, meeting i was doing or rather interpreting his message and then towards the end of the message when he said and for my eye and for my house we will serve the lord that settled it the lord called me for his work but then i when i look back to these so many years i'm truly daily convicted of my own nothingness of the life in the light of what we have been listening to these uh, listening these days our christian walk and when um, Dear brother John called me to to ask me if I could come I was really hesitant I said I don't want I cannot come I don't want to come But then again you know how John is very persistent loving dear brother I honor you And finally I said all right I'll come And after giving the word I thought oh boy I should not have given the word What will I say here before such a wonderful audience and especially some of the great men and women of god who know the scripture very well who preach the gospel but then from that day onwards almost daily i have been asking the lord to kindly help me i don't know how much, how far i will be able to um <clears throat> to show justice to the assignment that is given to me within the allotted time <clears throat> sometimes you might think that i am a boring preacher last night somebody said they will you send us to sleep or something and um, i don't know if you want to sleep you can sleep no problem the only thing is when you are about to sleep please get up and tell me john i am going to sleep what wonderful days these days have been huh when some of our dear ones got up and they expounded chapter especially chapter 4 chapters 4 and 5 of the book of ephesians i'm sure that we all have been challenged i do not want to repeat what they have said but i would like to mention a few things that i have written some years ago because in one of the conferences many years ago this very same subject the theme had been considered the late uh, brother justice samuel dr justice samuel was there and and a uh, few others just before that in my humble uh, searching of the scripture i found some of these things about walking and i noticed some of these wow well, one of the chief criticisms against the brethren let me be very very clear not only here in other places also is that we don't practice what we preach someone who was very close to me one sunday said that you you talk only you don't practice I went to the meeting sat there absolutely silent because i didn't have the the the, the boldness the courage to get up and then say something because i knew that it is it is true 
We talk a lot. We don't practice that much. And that practice comes in the theme of our Christian walk. There is a passage in Ezekiel before which I always shake when I read that. If you don't mind, I want to read that. Ezekiel says, as for you, actually the Lord says, son of man, the children of your people are talking about you beside the walls and in the doors of the houses. And they speak to one another, everyone saying to his brother, please come and hear what the word is that comes from the Lord. So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people. They hear your words that they do not, but they do not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their hearts pursue their own gain. And then he says to the Ezekiel, Indeed, you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do not do them. Ezekiel chapter 33, what an indictment, isn't it? Along with that, when you <coughs> read this also, because this talked with me too in Amos chapter 6, verse 3 onwards, woe to you. Who put far off the day of doom? Who caused the seat of violence to come near? Who lie on beds of ivory, stretch out on your couches? Eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the store. Who sing idly to the sound of stringed instruments and invent for yourselves musical instruments like David? And who drink wine from bowls and anoint yourselves with the best of ointments. Now listen. But are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. Anytime I happen to read that, I'm not saying they are words of condemnation, but they are words that uh, the Lord speak, uh, speaks to his people to bring them under conviction. As a result of our coming together, listening to the words of word of God given to us by these men of God who studied the word of God, who spent hour after hour meditating and reading and studying, and even doing some research, when we heard that, we loved it, and this morning, it was no exception. Thank you, Brother Ben, I'm so indebted to you. Not only today, the other day, not to praise him. The criticism that we, I'm confining my uh, um, words almost to the assembly. Look at the condition of our churches and assemblies in many parts of our own land and the um, assemblies even here. I'm not here to condemn the assemblies. For 41 years, we have been in this land. And uh, God has given me some simple opportunities to go to almost all of these assemblies at one time or another. Very dear man, men and women of God. But now, assemblies are split. Not all of them. Many of our children do not want to come for the meetings. Many of them don't want to hear an advice or a counsel from their parents, especially in the matter of our marriage and many other things. What is happening to us? What's wrong with us? Why this situation? Sunday after Sunday we come, we sit before the Lord and hear the word of God. Is there any change? And that is the question I want to ask myself. And these days, I have quite a few pages of um, notes which I con uh, wrote concerning this, for which I, I will not have any time to do. But the subject is walk with Christ. Who is Jesus, Jesus Christ? I don't have to give you any, any biblical answers to that. We all know. 
the perfect son of god who was in the bosom of the father because of his great love with which he loved you and me held the serving sinners he came here took my sin my iniquity your sin your iniquity went all the way to the cross not for his sin or anything he became an offering a sacrifice he died the death that you and i had to die in order that whosoever believes would be saved for eternity wonderful isn't it for all there is one single soul sitting here who has not come in true faith to the lord jesus and the bible is explicitly clear there is no other way no matter what man might say by way of philosophy or religion or anything jesus christ has very powerfully propounded peter the apostle followed suit i am the way the truth and the life no man comes to god the father but by me if you haven't given your heart to the lord jesus in repentance of your sin acknowledgement of your sin and calling upon him because you see him dying on the cross for your sin this is the moment for you to be transferred from the kingdom of satan into the kingdom of the lord jesus let me say that first and when you put your trust in jesus christ the bible makes it very clear that we are the children of god the children of the living god why did god save us you know what that in the light of what our brothers have been telling us that we as long as we live here to walk in the lord jesus walk in jesus christ the lord colossians chapter 2 verses 6 and 7 i'm not explaining any of those walk in the spirit galatians chapter 5 verse 16 walk worthy of god first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12 Walk in the newness of life, Romans chapter six, verse four. You go home and see these references. You will come to know the importance and the weight that is given to this particular subject of walking before a holy God. Walk according to His commandments, two John verse six. Walk properly or honestly, Romans thirteen and verse thirteen. walk worthy of the calling or the vocation with which god has called my beloved brother sunil albert on the opening night he took that portion why he went almost for an hour to explain that wonderful isn't it walk worthy of the calling john chapter 12 verse 35 to 36 walk in the light ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 this morning we saw walk as children of light Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 walk in good works Colossians chapter 4 verse 5 walk in wisdom 2 John verse 4 and 3 John verse 4 walk in truth 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 walk by faith Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 and 16 walk circumspectly wisely not as fools addressed to believers Christians walk in love this morning we considered that thank you brother that was great walk in love one can stand here for another hour to speak about the love of, of our god in christ jesus Philippians chapter 1 verse 27 and Galatians 2:14 walk worthy of the gospel of Christ because we are called by that gospel we are called by our god work walk worthy of our god because of our life and our 
behavior and conduct we should not be dishonoring the name of god first peter chapter 1 verse 15 walk in holiness some of these topics have already been covered there are more but finally what i notice here is walk to please god first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 1 hebrews chapter 11 verse 5 walking most every one of us because of the cholesterol and uh, heart problem you know we try to walk i also try to do but that walking is very very bad my wife says that the earth should not have any problem the even the ants should not have any problem that is how i walk meaning slow pace but still that is very needed because there was a reason but then i don't have time to tell all that ah now i tell my friends i have no heart no teeth no hair none of those things since 1994 how many surgeries i have no idea i will write a book on that walking walking uh Van Savner, a great preacher of yesterday years, he said, "It is a lost art now. Physical walk is not the main thing. Our entire life is what is called here the walk. It refers to our lifestyle, our daily occupation, our conduct, our behavior, our attitude. You name it." why god left us here after saving us he has a purpose unfortunately i don't fulfill that purpose in my life whether it is in my family or in the assembly or in the society at large how much am i able to present the lord jesus christ in his truthfulness God has given a commandment to the people of Israel Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 1 and we read now o israel now this is not only to them to you as well as to me listen to the statutes and the judgments which i teach you to observe that you may live he continues here o israel the statutes and judgments which i speak in your hearing today that you may learn them and be careful to observe them walking learn them hear from me do accordingly the new testament shows us so many references concerning christian walk christian life christian conduct apostle peter in his first letter appeals to us thus beloved i beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul having your conduct or your walk honorable among the gentiles that when they speak against you as he will do it they may by your good works which they observe and glorify god in the day of his visitation this can be explained but i have to enter into a let a, a, a another uh, territory in this uh, matter because our other brothers are will be handling these <clears throat> topics in the coming days also i want my my spirit was <clears throat> um, persuaded for the last few days to say a few things concerning concerning the church, church of the lord and we the members of the assembly what is the church Sunday back I made a study of this and then I a simple study when I went to Kerala and uh, Bangalore uh, um, I had uh, the opportunity to speak the church is the only institution that our lord promised to build and to bless Matthew chapter 16 verses 17 and 18 second the church is the gathering place of true worshipers Philippians chapter 3 verse 3 The church is the most precious assembly on earth since Christ purchased with his own blood. 
for the church is the earthly expression of the heavenly reality. Five, the church is the realm of spiritual fellowship. The local assembly especially. Six, the church is the proclaimer and the protector of divine truth. Seven, church is the chief place for spiritual edification and growth. These are things that speak to my own heart and to our own hearts. The elders should realize this in each assembly. And those who teach and preach, these are some of the truths that we should be, um, we should be remembering and telling others. Eight, the church is the environment where strong spiritual leadership develops and matures. Wish we had time. Nine, the church is the launching pad for world evangelization. Ha. That is where my good friend Chris Nikeley come. Most of the time alone, come to the beaches of Florida and many other places unknown by many people. Stands in the hot sun and he takes the gospel and he proclaims it. The church is the launching pad for world evangelization. The church is the only institution, number 10, that, that will ultimately triumph both universally and locally. Sarvalaviyamayam tadeshiyamayam atindiki vijayam kaivarikinna egasthavanam sabha omma. So in this church, we have certain responsibilities. Quickly, I will touch a few of them. I think I have a few more minutes. Church is compared to a body. Romans chapter 12, verse 4, 5, it says, For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. Please listen carefully. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. These are passages you all know very well. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. But now indeed there are many members, yet one and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. And the list goes on and on. I am one person. I have many members in my body. Each member of my body does what God has assigned to each one of them. My hand doesn't go and encroach upon the function that my leg or any other body part has to do. The Lord gave certain commandments. What should you and I as members of the body of the Lord Jesus to one another? It is a beautiful study if we can take some time. In our Friday night Bible study sometime back, we touched upon that. John chapter 15, verses 10 and 12. If you want to note it, you can note it. Otherwise, you can find out. This is my commandment, that you love one another. Very strongly, that point was brought out this morning and these days, so I'm not going to develop on that. In verse 10, there is a transmission of love from the Father to the Son, to believers who continue in his love by manifesting to others. Love itself is not defined in scripture, but its manifestations are to be seen wherever believers are to be found. In the local assembly where you are, in the local assembly where I am, this love has to be manifested. What arises, has it been true in my assembly with my fellow believers that can be developed again? 
Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you. That you love one another. Anyonium snehikita. Mutual responsibilities. What I should do to the other person and vice versa. Walk that pleases God is a life of moral purity. Again, that was touched upon this morning. That you also love one another. By this all we know that you are my disciples. How will the world come to know that I am a disciple of Christ? As it test. This is it. Peter says in chapter 2, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently, fervently. You know the meaning of the word? It appears several times here and there. With a pure heart. With a pure heart. When I say that, I am asking, questioning myself right now. Do I have that pure heart? Warren Wiersbe says, love is the circulatory system of the spiritual body, which enables all the members to function in a healthy, harmonious way. This must be an honest love, not a hypocritical love, and it must be humble, not proud, preferring one another. That means treating Treating others as more important than ours, ourselves. When a brother comes to my assembly, when I say my assembly, don't misinterpret. Am I able to see him as better than I? When a local church decides it wants only a certain high class of people, it departs from the Christian ideal of a ministry. Third, God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. You know what is the secret of many problems in the assemblies? I'm not simply saying anybody in particular in my mind. Please do not misunderstand me. I am nobody to judge anyone. If there is a problem in the assembly, where I have fellowship, the Bible says very clearly there should be no division. God's desire is that, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 24 to 25, God's desire is that there be no division in the church. Diversity leads to disunity. Why with him? Langil nana tuam, anai ke daya sushti kuno. Malayalam mana tu words berani tu? Arim, macam ni kira deh. In English tu berani kan? When the members compete with one another, oh, diversity leads to disunity. But diversity leads to unity when the members care for one another. The expression is one another. Mutual responsibilities. It is not only for the elder, it is not only for the deacon, it is not only for the brother or the sister. Every member who is truly born again and part of the body of the Lord Jesus. How do the members care for each other? By each one functioning according to God's will and helping the other members to function. If one member suffers, it affects every member. If one member is healthy, it helps others to be strong. Some years ago, while living in Chicago, that was 25 years ago, 26, going to for work early morning, 4.30 or so, started 45 miles one way through the high, many highways. As I almost reached the office, here comes, I was going to make a left turn, here comes a van and came and hit me. My car was pushed to the bush and the hood or the whatever, rose up automatically, not automatically, you know, it happened like that. As I came out, it was difficult, it was extremely cold. I didn't know what happened, I got out, I could not get out, then somehow made it. And then as I was walking and crossing the road, second time falling on the ice. And then I noticed that this, this particular finger was broken. And the police came and after taking me to the took me to the uh, hospital, 
they put me on a cast, in a cast for six months. I had to drive. All of a sudden, this hand came to the help for, of this hand. And all the members of the body, without anybody's uh, in, in, you know, compulsion or anything, came for the next six months for enabling me to drive, to go, to do things, all the members. That's exactly in our local assemblies should be happening. If a member suffers, struggles, whether it is because of temptation, sin, or sickness, or whatever, other members have a duty out of love to go and minister. But be filled, another one, be filled with the Spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making the Lord in your hearts to the Lord. No time to explain. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 onwards, submitting to one another in the fear of God, in the assembly, in the home, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Submitting yourselves one to another not only affords the final evidence of being filled with the Spirit, but it forms the basis for the teaching of the next section of the family in that particular chapter. There is no thought of superiority. No thought of inferiority. Equal. In the fear of Christ is the Spirit in which Submission is shown, not an upward sensation of fear in the sense of terror, but the outward manifestation of respect or reverence in Christ, of Christ. Here is deference to each other above and beyond natural politeness. Submission has nothing to do with the order of authority, but rather governs the operation of the authority, how it is given and how it is received. Another thing to do, one another, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another. James chapter 5 verse 16. Sin affects the, affects the whole church. I'm addressing myself. We can never sin alone for sin has a way of growing and infecting others. And such a man has to confess his sins to the church. When that is done, there is healing, physical and uh, spiritual. Another important principle, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. How do you and how do I fulfill the law of Christ? By bearing one another's burden. Brother, your brother has a burden, my sister has a burden. Up to me to go and help and bear. There is a saying in Malayalam, uh, those of you who do not know Malayalam, don't worry, when you go to school, you will learn that. One who cannot bear or, uh, you know, his own burden, how can he go to someone else and uh, help him out? But the scripture in, gives the injunction, bear one another's burden. I have a, uh, two full pages to deal with that. I don't have time. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Our God is giving these beautiful you know, not simply instructions, but encouragements for us to do. Liberty is expressed in not allowing the flesh to control life. This service is to be in love. This demands deep affection. Tender care, etum arthur the old of the caridal. Ready sympathy, sanatha the old of the sahadaram. Willingness to help, 
സഹായിപ്പാനുള്ളതായിരിക്കുന്ന മനസ്സ് ആൻഡ് സാക്രിഫിഷ്യൽ ഗിവിങ് യാഗോജ്ജ്വലമായിരിക്കുന്ന കൊടുക്കുന്നുള്ളതായിരിക്കും മനസ്സ് നമ്മൾ ഏറ്റ് വെരി സൂൺ ആസ് ഈച്ച് വൺ ഹാസ് റിസീവ്ഡ് എ ഗിഫ്റ്റ് മിനിസ്റ്റർ ഇറ്റ് വൺ അനദർ ആസ് ഗുഡ് സ്റ്റുവേഴ്സ് of the manifold grace of god first peter chapter 4 verse 10 christian love must result in service each christian has at least one spiritual gift that he must use to the glory of god and the building up of the church the apostle gives us the list of the gifts that he has given to the church hmm first corinthians efficiency and such places nine finally all of you be of one mind having compassion for one another look at the expression compassion for one another love as brothers be tender hearted be courteous not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling but on the contrary blessing knowing that you were called to this that you may inherit a blessing first peter chapter 3 verses 8 and 9 it means a sincere feeling for and with the needs of others 10 you call me master and lord oh this has been touched upon several times by almost everyone the lord master and lord and you say well for so i am and if i then your lord and master have washed your feet you also ought to wash one another's feet the jewish servants did not wash their master's feet it was a menial task and yet jesus did it for us to stoop down to humble ourselves very many times when i am wrong i am unwilling to confess that to my own wife she says today also she said after joining this man 49 years of long suffering and i whenever i hear that i tell in my heart yeah 49 years of suffering long so two negatives that make a positive so from 67 onwards somehow we are together for 29 years we completed on the 29th of june she has been great more honest than myself i am openly confessing it but unwilling to agree to it there was a missionary my brother harold mcgregor um when he visited us and taught us lessons some time back now he is with the lord he said uh, in one of the meetings where an australian missionary came and he spoke the word of god and the missionary raised the question to the audience hands up those couples who never had a fight in their families Poor fellows didn't understand the significance of all that. So quite a few people raised their hands. So, this missionary said, let us close our eyes and pray for these liars. <laughs> you should do something to one another. You call me master and lord. Oh, that instant message. when our lord took that basin without shedding tears it is difficult for us to consider it those dusty feet of those murmuring disciples unthankful ones without any hesitation if it were we it will be difficult for us <clears throat> at peace among yourselves one to another be at peace if that is practiced there will be no schism no fight in the assemblies the assemblies will go on 
Do you know that when our forefathers, I mean, the young generation may not know all these things. When they came out, most of them, majority of them, came from Hinduism or Orthodox Jacobites and Roman Catholics and all their families disowned them. They had nothing. But they stood. They took a stand for the gospel. They raised large families. Their children listened to them. Now just the opposite. That is a different story. They didn't have much to eat. My brother was giving the testimony. I come from a poor family, he said. In those days, I even remember when in 1953 I went to college from Karambanad to Trivandrum, nobody would be allowed to carry a bag of rice in the, in the bus. The police would get at Enath, get into the, uh, uh, get into the um, bus and they will examine everything. If there is rice or, uh, you know, paddy or whatever, they will take it out. How difficult the life was, you know. But now, no more difficulty. Dominoes, pizza, other pizza, this thing, that thing. Two freezers and five uh, uh, fridges and all different kinds of milk and everything. Hey, I hate this. I don't want this. That is the attitude. I'm not saying that, you know, they should not eat any of those things until they will not get any uh, heart attack, you know. Hey, I got that trouble not because I ate all kinds of pizza and everything. But no, 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 don't think so. I never, somehow, you know, I'm only 80 years old, so don't worry about that. Whenever you find a division and discussion, a dissension in a local church, it's usually because of the selfishness and sin on the part of the leaders. You may not like it. In many assemblies, there are elders who are not called by God. I'm not passing judgment. It's essential for all of us to sit in the presence of God, whether I am called by God. I cannot go just simply go to an assembly and say, oh, I am coming as an elder. I can give some examples, but I, not here now. Has God called you for his service? Has God called you as a deacon or as an elder, if not, step out. And when the assembly members see your conduct, your nature, the way that you act and you do the service of the Lord, they will say, brother, why don't you come and join us and help us out? Rather than six people coming and appointing him as bishop and archbishop and cardinal and all. There are others, but uh, you will, I know your patience is gone and my time also is almost up. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. First Peter chapter 4 verse 9. Do it from your heart. Humble evangelists, visitors, they come to your city and town. Are you willing to host them? Are you willing to show some kindness to them? They are not asking you to take them to quality inn and then what is it? Other inns are there. Just to see them in your hut. Provide for them. Be hospitable. It doesn't say that take them to the hospital, but hospitable. Do it from the heart. Our Christian love should not, should not only be fervent, ulsaha baridam. And forgiving, shemikinada, but it should also be practical. We should share our homes with others in generous or uncomplaining hospitality. We should use our spiritual gifts in ministry to one another. In New Testament times, hospitality was an important thing because there were no other places for those dear servants of God to go. Hospitality is a virtue, Malayalam, Sadgunam. That the commanded, that, that is commanded and commended. Other Devat in the Atabanam, other Devat in the Prasada Ramayikinda, Uriputheka. Throughout the scriptures, Moses included it in the law. Jesus enjoyed it, enjoyed hospitality when he was here on earth. So did the apostles.
and let us consider one another under to st- uh, uh, in order to stir up love and good works hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 you remember that verse let us consider one another mutual consideration of one another is the way to harmonious relationships in the assembly is the only but right and proper the, uh, that fellow members of the same body should feel for one another the consideration consideration has a more particular end in view it is for the provocation pragobanam of one another to love and to good works the word provoke is is normally used by us in a bad sense Indeed, Paul uses the word in that way in First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse five, where he says that love is not easily provoked. Here, the word is used with a different or a good connotation. We are to provoke. Udhibi pichi andre vaakundu. Prajodhana nalgunda, utteyadhana nalgunda, prayerana nalgunda unai rikkanam. we are to provoke or stimulate ah that word is very familiar i'm almost done president obama came 700 plus billion dollars to stimulate the economy did it stimulate but here is an ingredient that is given to us here is god's great deposit to, give, to us in order that we will be able to provoke it's a happy situation when brethren listen when brethren seek to provoke each other to love unfortunately sadly our love is being provoked when monthly committee meetings this is just an example only come together where is the respect that you give to your elders we can easily come together and you know discuss what is that um, uh but to this is them how many of you pray for your elders on a daily basis by name how many of us pray for the members in the assembly which is um, 50 or 100 or 200 whatever daily basis it's up to you and up to me it is given to us to do that if we don't do that don't address ourselves as the great shrestha devadas ma kandu be of the same mind toward one another do not set your mind on high things but associate with the humble do not be wise in your own opinion romans chapter 12 verse 16 finally do i have others therefore comfort one another with these words that glorious chapter 4 of 1st thessalonians as our beloved ones lie in that casket as with the sobbing and the tears we carry that casket to the burial ground as we bid farewell to the temporary to the dear one as the apostle wrote those things he concludes that chapter comfort one another are you able to comfort another person are you am i doing that there are many people struggling in our assemblies unable to verbalize their own problems they want to but it is difficult because there is not a listening ear people will come and they talk all kinds of things and then they show themselves of of but how many of us are willing including me willing to take a few minutes to go to that person and sit with him and uh, and um, you know read something or pray for or comforting whatever beautiful name given to the holy spirit the third person of the holy trinity when the comforter comes him god is given to us those are the positive things to consider i simply read three verses more to show us as to what are the negative things listen carefully 
James chapter 5, verse 9. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Easy to understand. Romans chapter 14, verse 13. Therefore, let's not judge one another anymore. But rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. Exhort one another daily. While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Very quickly. Some examples. Earlier, of early times of the history, my brother remembered that in prayer. Enoch walked with God. A little later, Noah walked with God. And afterwards, God called Abraham and said, Walk before him. There was a great servant of the Lord back in Kerala many, many years ago. I've heard of him, but I don't know whether I uh, recollect seeing him. In those days, there were no air-conditioned auditorium, no air-conditioned cathedrals or anything, no assembly halls. This is literal. On the patio or on the veranda, we used to call the early brethren. They would come on a Sunday morning to gather to remember the Lord. And the house owner, I think he was also one of the elders. If I name the, if I mention the name, most very, very many of you will remember. Early morning and Sunday morning, he got out of the house and he literally picked up many stones that were there on the, on the way and some thorns and thistles, whatever. Somebody asked him, why do you do that on a Sunday morning? You know, that, that apartment, that old man, he, this is what he said. There were no paved roads or anything, only this little road. He said, this is, this is the path where the feet of the sanctified ones, the saints, have to touch. Vichutanmarada kaligal padiyanda stalamanida avar itrayengiru mati kudutta adha sugama makitthir kanam. Can you believe that? That man is in glory now. If it is today, we will go here and there and gather some more and put it on the road. Second example or illustration, let me stop. There was a great man in Punalu, related to my wife, he's with the Lord now for so many years. He was a pioneer evangelist. He climbed the hills, he went to all places, proclaiming the good news of the poor people, you know, humble people. He became very old. This is also literal. Amy Jerian is not in heaven. I mean, Amy Jonsar is in heaven. Otherwise, you could have gone and asked him if I am telling the truth or not. This old man, weary, tired, almost sick, and yet he would go and visit the sick people, climbing the hills, going to their homes, eating, if they give something, eating. And somebody asked, Apacha, Apacha means father or dad or whatever. No, you are very old now. Let somebody else do that. Let somebody else do that. Not that he was unwilling to give any task to other people. Nobody else would do. Oh, the reply that M.P. Johnson gave. It happened many years ago when he told us. It never disappeared from my mind. I have to say that in Malayalam first. Then I will put it in English if possible. These are my children whom I delivered painfully. Meaning, I, by the grace of God, brought them into the kingdom of God 
I am their father and mother. I need to weep. I need to intercede for them. That's why I do that. May God help us to clean the way or clear the way for the believers to walk in the assembly and in the home. May the Lord help each one of you, us to go even to the remotest part of, the, of our place or city to see our loved ones and say, sit with them and say a word of comfort. Walk. You will hear more about that. I didn't turn uh, to those questions very much. But one another, do these things one another. Our mutual responsibilities. Are we willing to do that? To do that. Why do these men go from here or from their native land to far off lands in, in uh, all parts of the world? Many go to Morocco, to Tunisia, to Turkey, to Vietnam, to Cambodia, to Laos, many, many countries where there is hardly any freedom. Last night, I think it was one brother was giving, he gave us Chhattisgarh brother. Giving a challenge. Oh, I also wish that as a result of this conference, 39 years, that God will raise someone to hear the call of God in order to, to take the gospel. Sometimes when the missionaries come and say, I almost wanted to go there, but you know, being a young fellow, I cannot do that. Are we willing? Love one another. Walk wisely to please God. Shall we pray? Our gracious God, our loving Heavenly Father, our words, oh, we pray that there should not be simply words that sound for a moment and they disappear. We pray that as a result of this conference, as a result of the listening to the word of God, my own heart be challenged and thrust me out into the open somehow to bring another one into the kingdom of God. As we depart from this place for the rest of the night, take us in safety, watch over us. Should the Lord tarry to come, may we have another wonderful day of singing, learning, obeying, and uh, intending to or desire, uh, committing ourselves to walk the walk of faith. We give our praise and thanks. Some of us have been sick. Our dear sister, baby, could be in New York. A few hours ago, she was called home to be with the Lord after suffering so much. Oh, and I in Chicago, and there may be a few others. We give our praise and thanks, Lord. We honor thee, we glorify thee. Be with us for the rest of the night. In the most wonderful name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father, the comfort and fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and until the Lord comes. Thank you very much. God bless you.